Hello everyone, it's Kik here, and in today's episode you can expect OpenAI with an ambitious project to increase the number of semiconductors in the world, uncovering the mystery of Apple Vision Pro screens, a secret AI project from Apple, CERN with plans to build a new Hadron Collider, and China's testing of 6G in Earth's orbit. All this and much more right now, let's go! Today's episode starts with OpenAI. In their quest for a revolution in the world of artificial intelligence, Sam Altman turns to an unprecedented project, raising a staggering $7 trillion to create enterprises capable of satisfying the growing hunger of AI systems for computing power. These funds, according to his plan, will allow the construction of dozens of new semiconductor factories aimed at accelerating the development of generative AI, promising breakthroughs in areas from automation to content creation. Altman does not limit his search for support within the US. He aims to attract international investments, negotiating with Arab monarchies and the leading global chip manufacturer TSMC. The plan envisages that Arab investors will provide a significant portion of the required funds, which, together with other sources, will help realize the ambitious goal of scaling up semiconductor production. Such grand plans underline not only Altman's ambitions, but also raise questions about the capabilities and limitations of the modern technology industry, the balance between innovation and its economic feasibility, and in more detail about how semiconductors are produced and why it is not such a simple task. We will tell you in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Let's move on. After the first part of the disassembly, where iFixit was surprised by the complexity of the inner world of Vision Pro, which we already talked about in the previous episode, in the second series, they decided to unravel the mystery of the screens. Are they 4K or not? In the end, the screens turned out to be not quite 4K in the classical sense, but not just any ordinary either. With dimensions of 3660 by 3200 pixels, they boast more pixels than your standard 4K TV, but by strict standards, they are not considered 4K. The pixel density of 3380 ppi is impressive. One iPhone pixel can fit a whole 50 Vision Pro pixels. The repairability was rated 4 out of 10, but with a note of optimism. Every component inside turned out to be modular, even the earphones and straps, which theoretically simplifies repair. But getting inside is not an easy task, thanks to Apple's love for glue and glass. The surprise was that the screens are not so easy to transfer from one device to another. But in iFixit's opinion, this is more a matter of individual fitting than design. However, not everything is so rosy. The front glass and OLED panels cannot be repaired and the battery is so tightly sealed that opening it without damage is a task from the realm of fantasy. And as the cherry on top, there's little chance that Apple will ever offer parts for self-repair, except maybe for an additional battery and sun visors. In general, Vision Pro from iFixit gets the title modular but not entirely friendly to self-repair. So since we're talking about Apple, let's continue with them. It seems Apple once again wants to show who's boss, this time in the world of AI, with a new wonder of technology called MLLM Guided Image Editing, or simply MGIE. This isn't just another update, but a real magic kick in the world of image editing. Imagine, you tell your phone what you want to do with a photo and it executes, like a little genie from a lamp, only without the lamp and three wishes. iOS 18 promises to turn our boring photos into masterpieces on the fly, adding a pinch of AI magic. MGIE will learn to manipulate everything from brightness to texture, change backgrounds like gloves, and even roll up new objects. All this, using just your voice and a bit of imagination. And now the most interesting part, will this AI alchemist be part of Siri or become a separate tool? We'll find out at WWDC. And more about Apple. It seems they're still playing catch-up with foldable phones, testing prototypes over six long years. According to rumors from The Information, there are at least two types of foldable smartphones currently in development, confirmed by active communication with Asian component suppliers. But here's the catch. If these components don't live up to Cupertino's expectations, Apple might altogether abandon the foldable iPhone idea. Sources say that Apple already had a nearly finished foldable phone in 2020, but it was scrapped due to unsatisfactory quality. Now engineers dream of a miracle iPhone thinner than a monoblock when folded. Also in development is a foldable iPad, which might see the light of day sooner than its smartphone sibling, thanks to softer durability requirements. Apple apparently wants to play in the style of Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, or Motorola Razr, aiming for a 7-inch screen, which, rumor has it, has already received Tim Cook's blessing, but questions about the folding mechanism, screen durability, and protective plastic instead of glass remain open. Although the development has been dragging on for years, insiders hint that a foldable iPhone might not appear before 2026. Six. But as they say, there are no guarantees that this project will ever see the light of day. So maybe by that time we'll have gotten to flying cars and Apple will have a foldable iPad? 
But let's leave Cupertino alone and turn our gaze to the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, where they are discussing building a new, even more powerful collider that could replace the Large Hadron Collider, which has reached the limits of its capabilities. This project, named Future Circular Collider, FCC, is estimated at a round sum of $17 billion, and its implementation will require not only large investments from the EU and UK budgets, but also forgetting about financing other scientific programs for a while. Not all scientists are thrilled with such plans calling for attention to more pressing problems, such as climate change. However, CERN's ambitions are great. The new collider, with a ring diameter of 91 km, will generate particle collisions with previously unseen energies, opening new horizons in elementary particle physics. Despite criticism, CERN considers the FCC project a Higgs factory, and believes it will be key to new discoveries in the structure of the universe. Plans for its construction include starting work in 2033 and launching in 2048, promising a real revolution in the science of the micro world. World. Let's just hope they don't accidentally blow up the universe in the process. It would be pretty awkward to explain to the finance department. And now Avenir Telecom under the world-famous Energizer brand is about to unveil its new giant at the MWC 2024 in Barcelona, the Energizer P28K smartphone. The name of this beast hints at the capacity of its battery, a whopping $28,000 mAh, making you wonder if it's trying to become a backup generator for your home. With such a battery, this mobile phone promises to be not just a phone but a real survivor in the world of electronics, able to last days in the wild without recharging. Energizer P28K, in addition to its main advantage, can also boast an impressive 6.78-inch FHD display and a camera armada, a 60-megapixel main and two 20-megapixel auxiliaries. But the most interesting thing is, of course, its battery, which seems to set new standards for the concept of external battery. It reminds us of last year's Energizer Power Max P18K Pop with its 18,000 and mAh battery, which, however, made users pay for energy independence not only with money but also with comfort of use. Its thickness of 18 mm was quite noticeable. It seems with the P28K, one will have to sacrifice sleekness for continuous operation. It's still unclear how long it will take to fully charge, but perhaps it's better to charge it overnight, if, of course, you have a strong enough table to support its weight. SpaceX presents the world with an innovative idea. Unmanned barges serving as maritime internet stations to expand the Starlink network. This step, reflected in the application to the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, could radically change the approach to providing internet connectivity in maritime conditions, making it more accessible and reliable for users worldwide. These barges are planned to be equipped with standard Starlink complexes, allowing thorough testing of the system in open sea conditions. Such a project not only demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to innovations in space and internet technology, but could also play an important role in providing connectivity to naval groups in strategically important regions, especially considering the growing tension in the Asia-Pacific region. And what's kick without space? China's technological giant and telecommunications monster, China Mobile, has made a huge leap into the future of communication by successfully launching a satellite for testing 6G technology. Unlike 5G, which has already begun to change the landscape of mobile communication with its ultra-fast data transmission and almost instantaneous response, 6G promises to explode these metrics to unimaginable heights. Using higher frequencies, 6G will allow downloading entire libraries of information in a second, providing unprecedented speed and bandwidth. The satellite launched by China Mobile for testing 6G technology is part of an ambitious program to develop the next generation of mobile communication. This satellite, being in low Earth orbit, demonstrates a fundamentally new approach to creating a global communication network. Equipped with advanced technologies, it tests a distributed autonomous architecture for 6G, promising low latency and high-speed data transmission, significantly surpassing the capabilities of current 5G networks. The satellite is equipped with Chinese software and hardware allowing software recovery directly in orbit, flexible base network functions, and automated management. These innovations aim to increase the efficiency and reliability of network operation in space conditions. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye!